WordPress is a great platform for powering blogs with multiple authors. I use it to run JourneyToTheSea.com, a site I describe as an online magazine devoted to myth. Every month or so, I publish a new issue, which includes three or four articles by various contributors. In WordPress, I created a user for each of these contributors, and I can easily associate each blog post with a user. WordPress even creates a page for every user, which lists off all the posts they've contributed. In this presentation, I want to take a look at the techniques I use in the theme for Journey to the Sea to extend that multiple author functionality and to highlight and promote each of the individual contributors. Now the actual theme is pretty heavily customized and many of its features are specific to that particular site. So instead of looking at that theme, I thought it would be better to start with a more standard blog theme, the Cutline theme by Chris Pearson. I've loaded up that theme here on the Journey to the Sea content, changed the header to look more like what Journey to the Sea would look like if it used the Cutline theme, and I now want to apply some of the same techniques I use at Journey to the Sea to this theme. The Cutline theme is released under a Creative Commons license, so I'm able to make changes to it and distribute those changes under a similar license. I've made them available for download at my website. Probably the easiest way to get there is to go to randyhoyt.com slash wordpress and click on the button labeled Presentation Multiple Authors in WordPress. Alright, so the first change I'd like to make is to add the author's name right below the blog post title here on the home page, making it a link to the page that lists all that author's posts. If you do a quick Google search for WordPress author, you'll find a great resource online for discussing this author functionality in WordPress at the codex called Author Templates. It has a number of useful features, and I'll be covering some of those in this presentation. The first, under the basics here, is titled Linking to Author Pages from Posts. This is exactly what we want to do. WordPress comes with a template tag, or a simple PHP function, the Author Post Link, that does exactly that. It'll output the author's display name and make it a link to the author's page. I'm going to go ahead and copy this from the codec so that I can add it to my theme. To edit the theme, I'm going to be using a piece of open source software called Aptana Studio. It's a great development environment for working with websites. It handles HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and with a plugin, PHP. It has a built-in FTP function that allows you to connect to your server and edit your files directly without having to FTP them using another program. Now you can edit your theme directly through the WordPress interface under Appearance uh, Theme Editor. But that has a number of drawbacks, and if you're going to be doing a lot of theme editing, I would really recommend a more robust program. For example, in the WordPress interface, you can't undo your changes after you've saved them, and you can't easily create new files. Aptana Studio also has a number of developer-friendly features like syntax highlighting and error checking, and even has plugins available for integrating with uh, source control repositories like Subversion. I've connected out to the Journey to the C site. And you can see here the WordPress folders, WP Admin, WP Content. And under that, uh, there's the Themes folder and then the folder for Cutline. Now, Cutline's a pretty standard theme. It has about the same number of files as you would expect to find in most themes. To edit the home page, you want to look either for a home.php file or an index.php file. Many themes will have a home.php, but if they don't, then WordPress will use instead the index.php file. I'm going to go ahead and open up that index.php file. Now the home page is a list page. It's going to list off a number of posts. And it looks like most theme files do. It starts with a header, a function call to get header, uh, then some HTML, and then what's known in WordPress as the loop. It's going to loop through the full list of posts that it has and display the same HTML for each post. The loop begins with this code right here, while have posts, and goes down to the end while, and everything inside of there is going to get executed for each post. Uh, starting there with the H2, that's the heading, it's going to list off a link uh, to the post. And then below that you've got this line that has the time, the category, and some other meta information about the post. So we want to add our piece of code right here so that it'll say by author name before the time. Now Cutline uses a piece of HTML mid dot in between each of these pieces of meta information. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that for consistency. Let me save the file look back over at the site and you'll now see that by Randy Hoyt has appeared here under the blog post title and this is a link to the page that lists all the posts by Randy Hoyt before I click through to that though there's a number of other places where this link needs to be added so it'll appear below the title of each of the blog posts 
Let me click through to the permalink page, which lists the full content for this article, and you'll notice there's no link there. That's because the permalink page is not controlled by index.php, it's controlled by a different file. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code for the link and paste it in to the proper file. Now the permalink page is controlled by a file called single.php. It's the page that gets called for the permalinks because there's a single post on that page instead of a list of posts. I'll open up that file and you'll see it looks very similar. It has the git header at the top, the HTML, and it also has the loop. Now the loop is only going to go through one post because it is a single post, but other than that the code looks exactly the same. Pasted that in there and you can see the link appears there underneath the blog post title. There's a few other pages that list posts that use a different uh, file. These are tag pages, uh, category pages, date pages. Let me click back on the home page. You can see there this theme lists all the tags right below the post. So I'm going to click on JRR Tolkien. This will list all the posts that are tagged Tolkien. And you can see here, uh, this is another list page which does not have that link underneath the blog post title. Now these, this page is usually controlled by a file called archive.php. You may have a file like tag.php or for the categories a category.php. And we'll talk a little bit more about the template hierarchy in a minute. But for now, suffice it to say that archive.php is what's controlling uh, the tag list page. This actually has some extra code at the top for the titles because it is being used for a number of different pages. So it wants to get the title just right based on if it's a category page or if it's a date page, if it's a monthly or a yearly archive. But below the title, then, the loop code is all exactly the same, and we can paste it in there just like we did before. Give this page a refresh, and you'll see the, the, the name right there. Now the category for this post is issue 10. I use categories to handle the issue numbers. Click on that link and it'll take you to the category list page with, which lists all the posts with this category. And you can see the link is already there. That's because these archives, the tag archives and the category archives, are both controlled by the same archive.php. I'm going to finally click on the link, Randy Hoyt, which will take you to the Randy Hoyt page that lists all the posts written by this author. And you can see the link's actually there already, too, because this page is also controlled by archive.php. WordPress uses what's known as a template hierarchy to look through the different files that you want. And the archive files usually always look the same, the tags, the categories, the authors, the dates, all of that. Flipping back to the Codex article, though, I'm going to scroll down and take a look here at what's called the template hierarchy. Now there is a way to make these individual archive pages look differently. So you can make your tag pages look different than your category pages, look different than your uh, date-based archives, and look different than your author pages. So what WordPress does is it looks for a specific file, and if it doesn't find that, it falls back on a more general file. In case of the author pages, it first looks for a file called author.php. If it does not find that file, author.php, it'll then fall back and use the archive.php. So if we want to make our author pages look different than the other archive pages, what we need to do is create a file called author.php. And of course, a good place to start is to take a copy of the archive.php file and then make the changes to it that you need.